Welcome to our lecture online. Now let's take a look at a charged insulated sphere. An insulator so that the charge doesn't just reside on the surface like for a conductor but, char but is uh, arranged in such a way that's evenly distributed throughout the entire volume of the sphere. And so what we're trying to do now is find the electric field inside that charged sphere and outside the charged sphere. We know that we're going to start with the same equation that the strength of the electric field times the surface area of the Gaussian surface is equal to the charge inside divided by epsilon sub naught, which is the permittivity of free space. And of course, when we then solve this for E, it's simply the charge inside divided by the surface area of a sphere times epsilon sub naught. Now, the way we're going to look at the way the charge is distributed, we're going to call that the volume charge density and we use the Greek letter rho to indicate that. And so what we really mean with the letter rho is that it's the charge per unit volume. So we're told the charge density as a function of volume. So what we need to do then is find out how much charge will be inside the Gaussian surface when we find the electric field inside the sphere and how much will be inside the Gaussian surface when we find it outside the sphere. So let's draw the Gaussian surface in each case. So we're going to have a spherical shape, but that spherical shape would only hold a portion of the sphere. But in this case, of course, the spherical shape will hold the entire sphere. The distance from the center of the sphere to the Gaussian surface, let's call that distance r, and a will represent the, the uh, diameter, not diameter, but the radius of the sphere, the charged sphere itself. Just like we did over here, a represents the the radius of the charged sphere, and r will represent the distance to the Gaussian surface. And r will then, of course, be the variable, a will be the constant. So what we need to do in each case is determine how much charge there is inside the Gaussian surface here, and how much charge there is inside the Gaussian surface there. Here it's easy, it's all of the charge, but here it will just be a portion of the charge. So the way to find it then is to say that Q inside the Gaussian surface is equal to the charge density times the volume of the Gaussian surface. How much volume is contained within that? We multiply the volume of the surface, the Gaussian surface, times the charge density, which is the volume charge density, which will give us the total charge inside. So in this case, that will equal the density times 4 thirds pi, the radius, cubed, and that will be the radius of the Gaussian surface cubed. That will be the charge inside. Now if we go to the whole, the, if we go to the point where we're trying to find the electric field outside the sphere, then of course it's all of the charge, and in this case we can say that Q inside is going to be equal to the density times not the volume of, this, of the Gaussian surface, but simply the volume of the sphere, because there's no charge outside the sphere. So in this case, we can say that this is equal to the charge density times 4 thirds, should be a 3, there we go, pi a cubed, where a is simply the radius of the sphere. That's where the charge is limited. So this will be a smaller amount of charge, because we only take the charge inside the Gaussian surface. This will then contain all the charge in the sphere. So now we're ready to go ahead and write the equation to determine the electric field at the Gaussian surface edge right there, and the electric field at the Gaussian surface edge right there. So in this case, we're going to use the equation E is equal to, so now that's this equation right here, the charge inside, which goes in the numerator, that will be the density, times 4 thirds pi times the Gaussian surface radius cubed, divided by 4 pi rg squared, so 4 pi the radius of the Gaussian surface squared times the permittivity of free space. And then you can see that the pi's cancel out, the fours cancel out, this is r cubed and r squared, so r squared cancels out two of those, leaves us one in the numerator, and so then we can see that the electric field at the edge of the Gaussian surface, which is a point inside the sphere, a distance r away from the center of the sphere, so that's going to be the density times the radius of the Gaussian surface divided by, the 3 goes to the denominator, and epsilon sub naught. I guess I made this a little bit too long, and so this will then be the equation 
for the electric field inside a charged spherical object, which is an insulator so that the charge is stuck throughout the entire sphere. For the point that's outside the sphere, we want to find the electric field here. Then again, we use the same equation, so the electric field is equal to Q inside, which is density times 4 thirds pi a cubed divided by, and of course here that would be the Gaussian surface, which is 4 pi r g squared, 4 pi r sub g squared, that would be the area, the surface area, the Gaussian surface, times epsilon sub naught, and then notice that the 4s cancel out, the pi's cancel out, but notice that A and R do not cancel, so in the numerator we end up with the density times A cubed, in the denominator we end up with a 3, we end up with the radius of the Gaussian surface squared, and then we end up with epsilon sub naught. And so this here will be the strength of the electric field outside the sphere, and this will be the strength of the electric field inside the sphere as a function of the radius of the Gaussian surface, so depending upon where you pick that, notice that the farther out you go until you reach the surface, the larger the electric field will be until you reach the surface, then beyond that the electric field will be defined by this, and then of course it gets smaller and smaller as R becomes bigger and bigger as you move farther and farther away from the charged object. And that's how you find the electric field strength both inside and outside a charged spherical insulator. And that's how it's done.